Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be programming a Dodge Caravan transmission. Well, not necessarily, but that's what the transmission shop brought it to us for. They want us to make sure that there's no updates for the transmission programming. On this vehicle, it's more than likely held in the PCM. We are also gonna be testing out the Launch J2534 device that comes with my Launch Torque Link. So it's the Launch Smart Link device. We are going to see if it will work with Ytech 2.0 and the Chrysler Flash program to program this vehicle. I'm gonna show you how to look up calibrations so you don't have to pay for a VIN slot in Ytech 2.0. Sometimes the subscriptions can get quite expensive if you are programming Chrysler vehicles. Um, some people refuse to program them just because it's a kind of a tedious process. <laughs> Um, some, some choice words that we probably shouldn't say on YouTube. So we are going to go to MopartSP.com. If you don't have an account, you'll have to create an account. And this is where we're going to buy and access some of our subscriptions. We're going to check our status of our subscriptions as well. So we're going to click on the aftermarket button. We're going to log in. You have to create an account possibly. So I do have a device that's active. I have an active YTech 2.0 subscription but I don't have any Tech Authority subscriptions available. Uh, it says I'm expired, so I'm gonna have to purchase a Tech Authority subscription for this. Almost any flashing, unless you already have the file, is gonna require, at minimum, a Tech Authority subscription. So we're gonna go to purchase. These are the devices. We're gonna go up to the top and click Tech Authority. And we're going to get a three-day subscription for $36.95. Go to cart, and I'll go ahead and finish checking this out. So my order is complete. We're going to go back to the home screen, and it shows that I have an unassigned three-day subscription. Now, normally this works fairly quickly, but today I was having some issues. It says, subscription cannot be assigned. No assigned field users available. And I kind of had to fumble around back and forth. And I think it was really just a waiting game, waiting for them to process it on the back end of their server. And then all of a sudden, after logging out, logging back in, messing around for a little bit, it finally allowed me to assign it to my username. Next, we're going to go to Stellantis IOP or the Independent Operator Portal. We're going to log in here and I'm going to click on Dodge. And we have a service library, or if we click on diagnostic tools at the top, we can go down here to J2534 flash. Now we do have to enter in a VIN number. You used to be able to just pick year, make, model, or search by calibration, but they changed quite a bit of this stuff about six months ago, uh, maybe even less than that. And now it is a completely different process. Sometimes it works better, but sometimes the files don't work with the legacy flasher. We're gonna enter our VIN and hit search, and it's going to give us all of the calibrations for that vehicle. We go down to PCM, and we have an issue. We have two options here. So we have a standard pedal or an enhanced pedal, and I don't know what either one of those means. Um, it does give us the calibration numbers, so we could probably look up a flash table to see which one is the most current calibration. Or, since I have a subscription to Ytech 2.0, I'm just going to log in to Ytech and it'll tell me which flash calibration I need. In the bottom corner, we see checking for update. We have to wait for that to go away before we can select our device. You can see the device is inactive. So we're just going to wait here a second. It'll finish checking for updates and then we can pick our J box. And it says device not connected. So let's go down here to non verified J box and pick the launch device. This message will pop up, just giving us a warning that this is not a verified J2534 device. Now, most of them on the market are not verified. Um, so if you have problems with the application, their tech support come, when you call for tech support, they're just gonna tell you that it's a problem with your JBox. They're not gonna give you a whole lot of support Normally, once you get logged in, as long as Ytech can see the device, then everything seems to work without an issue. Um, I did have the key off, so I went ahead and cycled the key back on to see if it would identify the VIN number. 
which it did. And now it's basically going to do a pre-scan behind the scenes. It's going to look at all the different modules on the network, and it's going to do that before we go any further. But we can already see over the right-hand side of the screen, there's two recalls. It just populated with 13 diagnostic trouble codes. And once it's done gathering information, it'll let us access a vehicle and look at the topology of the network. So it's done collecting data. We can click on it bring us to that topology screen. And it's gonna show us all the modules on the vehicle. I'm gonna click on all DTCs and see what codes are in there to make sure that there's nothing weird before I try programming this transmission. If we go to flashes, we can see that there is a PCM standard pedal flash update. If we click at the bulletin list, there is one for transmission shift quality improvements. So that's probably why they want us to reflash this the company that sold them the transmission is saying, hey, make sure you reflash this with the new update or we're not gonna warranty this transmission. So now we know we have the standard pedal. Let's go ahead and download these files. And I click that one twice because it seems like the first one you click takes a little while to start downloading. That's okay, we can uh, get rid of that later. On the page where we entered the VIN number, there was instructions on where we need to put these files. So we need to copy these files over to another folder. And it's a temporary folder, and when we're done programming this vehicle, the files are going to get deleted. So if you want to keep a copy of these files, put them somewhere safe. Um, I just left another copy in my download folder, so it's not a big deal. This folder is going to be located on your primary drive under your username, app data, local, temp, low. And there was nothing in this folder when I started. I copied these files over. When we're done programming, if it programs successfully, it's going to erase all these files. So I just have a shortcut to this folder that I keep in my Chrysler folder on the desktop. So it's easy for me to access and I can just dump files into it. We're going to close YTech. We'll get out of this screen. We'll go back to the, uh, the screen we were at before this. And up at the top where it says connect, we're gonna switch to the Chrysler J2534 flash application. We're gonna select our pass through, which is the launch J2534. And we're gonna hit start. The key is on. It's going to connect to that ECM. It's going to verify that the part number that we're trying to load in is the correct part number. It says, do you want to update the GPEC ECU to part number and the part number that we just selected? And we can see that there's an alternate part number up at the top where it says AH. I honestly didn't look to see which calibration was in it currently, but if we want to flash, we'll go ahead and hit yes. So it's starting the flash process. It's going to do a few checks before it gets started. And then it's going to erase a section of that ECU. And then it'll start loading our new flash into it. Most of these will take anywhere from three to 10 minutes, depending on which module you are programming. So I'm just looking at the launch smart link device and we can see that it is communicating and it keeps track of how much data is being transferred. I don't think that is what it's receiving from the vehicle. I think that's what it's receiving from the laptop over the USB cable. And I'll show another screen later on showing how that did jump up. Now I'm gonna speed this up so you guys don't have to wait for this whole process to happen. Now that we're almost done with the flash, we're at 2.58 megabytes. So we were at kilobytes before and now we're at megabytes. So it wants us to turn off the ignition. Once we turn off the ignition, we'll hit OK. Turn the ignition back on. And it says flash process complete. Let's just open up YTech 2.0 and make sure that it doesn't show any other updates for this vehicle. So I can already see that we have more codes and that's probably just because several modules couldn't communicate while we were flashing the vehicle. 
So we do have some flashes available for the sliding doors. We're not worried about that. That's not a customer complaint and they're not paying us to fix that. So a bunch of codes, let's go ahead and clear those out. I'm gonna cycle the key again to see if any of those codes come back. And we'll go to the topology screen. So we can see that the little lightning bolt is next to the driver door module, passenger door module in the sliding doors. Next, we're gonna do the transmission quick learn procedure. I think I actually missed a step. I, I was probably supposed to clear the line pressure counters, but the transmission shop, they'll go through all that stuff again once they get it back from me. And so that's it. That is how we program a vehicle. Now, if we weren't using YTech and we were using an aftermarket scan tool, we could have looked at what the current calibration number was in there. We could have looked it up on a flash reference chart or looked at that part number. Normally the last character changes as there's revisions. We could have figured out if it was a standard pedal or the non-standard pedal. It won't let you flash the wrong calibration. So we could have bought just the Tech Authority subscription, not worried about the YTech 2.0 on this vehicle, downloaded that calibration. We still install the YTech 2.0 because we need that J2534 flash application. We open up the program, instead of logging in and selecting our device, we just go down to that, use the J2534 flash application. As long as we have the right update files in that temporary folder, then the flash process will continue. Now there are some newer vehicles that don't want to use the legacy flasher or the J2534 flash device, and you have to actually use YTech 2.0. If we were to program this with YTech 2.0, we need an active subscription for YTech 2.0. We need an active subscription for Tech Authority. And we need a subscription for a VIN slot for programming. So three different subscriptions to do that programming on that vehicle. On some of those vehicles, there's like two or three different CAN networks that have to communicate at the same time. And there's only a few interfaces on the market that will perform that duty. I don't know if the launch device will do that because I didn't have one of those vehicles in the shop to test it on. Um, when I do get one of those vehicles, I'll try it out, see if it works. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.